Now this is a term that gets tossed down a lot, and that's pH. You know, when I check your pH, what's the pH? The pH went up, went down. We're going to look here at exactly what is pH. Well, the definition is it's the measure of molar concentrations of, of hydrogen ions in a solution. It kind of determines whether it's an acid or a base. What does this measure kind of mean? Well, we're measuring hydrogen ions. What's a hydrogen ion? Well, it's a hydrogen atom that has a charge. In this case, a hydrogen ion has a positive charge here, a cation. Typically, hydrogen contains a proton and an electron. When it loses that electron, it becomes just a proton, and here we have our hydrogen ion. And that hydrogen ion, H+, cations, also usually just referred to, or sometimes, as just a proton. Now, the scale of pH, it's measured from 0 to 14. If you're uh, under 7, that range of pHs is considered acidic, 7 is considered neutral, and above 7 is the basic range, or alkaline. Now, pH directly means potential of hydrogen. The scale is logarithmic. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's used to determine the city or basis of, of a water-based aqueous, which is aqueous stands for water-based solution. There's also something called pOH, and that's the potential of hydroxide. And while we typically focus on pH, hydroxide is kind of like the opposite. So if we take pH2, and the pOH of that would be 12. If we add them together, we get 14, which is our scale here. So again, we're focusing on the hydrogen ions uh, here, the 0 to 14 scale. There's also pOH that works on the same 0 to 14 scale. It's kind of the, just the opposite, as you can kind of see related here. But again, our focus here is pH. Now, acids and bases. So an acid is a substance that increases the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. So this kind of lever shows here, as the hydrogen ions increase, the pH will decrease. So examples of tomato juice, grapefruit juice, and lemon juice, they have increasing amounts of hydrogen ions, therefore the pH becomes lower. Bases are any substance that reduces the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution that's defined as a base. That simply, those bases reduce hydrogen ions directly by accepting them. Uh, again, examples of solutions that are basic would be like baking soda, ammonia, and bleaches, and drain cleaners. So those are much more in the base side, or that pH below 7 pH neutral is, se is 7. So this is a solution that is not acidic or alkaline, such as pure water, pure H2O, that has a pH of 7. You can see these universal indicators, you know, colors that they may turn. Typically around that green range would be representative of a solution with a neutral pH. The pH scale of that aqueous solution, it's the measure of the hydrogen and hydroxide ions, measure of that 0 to 14 degree, and most biological fluids are in the pH range of 6 to 8. Each pH unit represents a tenfold difference, and that scales logarithmic, we see it here. This means a small change in pH actually indicates a substantial change in hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentrations. As we can kind of see an example here, it's a tenfold increase. We're moving that decimal place every pH, so we can see a large difference. Now we may hear terms something called like strong acids or bases. So what does this mean? Well, strong acids and bases are ones that completely dissociate in water. So here we see hydrochloric acid, HCl, and that breaks apart into a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion completely. And a strong base here, sodium hydroxide, we see the sodium and hydroxide completely breaking apart in water. Weak acids and bases, they only partially break apart. Now that they only partially break apart, they can kind of flip back and forth, and that's what these arrows refer to. So sometimes we see strong acids, um, strong bases, uh, weak acids, weak bases, and this is just kind of giving you the background of the kind of the chemistry that's going on behind these. Now we have a acid and a base, for example, a strong acid and a strong base, and mix them together in equal proportions, we should get pure water and salt. What does that look like here? Well, if we have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, which I mentioned are both strong acids and strong bases, they'll break apart into H2O and sodium chloride. That's basically water flipping back and forth. So where does the H2O come from? We have the H here and H here, that's the two H's and the oxygen forming water, and then the sodium and the chloride forming here. So you kind of get salt water in an ideal situation, mixing a strong acid and base here. Now the pH scale is a concentration of hydrogen ions in a given substance, and the equation behind that is pH equals minus the log, and these brackets mean concentration of hydrogen ions. What does this kind of look like kind of in a graphical representation here? Well, pH neutral of 7 has equal amounts of hydrogen ions and equal amounts of hydroxide ions. As we become increasing acidity, we are working our way this way, we can see the percentage of our hydrogen ions increases. As we become more basic, the hydrogen ions decrease. 
Remember, as I mentioned, the pH we're talking about from this standpoint, pOH would look at the opposite, and that's the hydroxide ion. So we can see how that changes as we shift our pH from 7. Now here's just a, an example of why uh, being precise with pH is important. Uh, how much greater is the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution with pH 2 than a pH with solution 6? So we're looking at, this is only a difference of 4, but when we apply this to this equation here, pH minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration, comparing these two pHs that only differ by 4, well it's not just a difference of 4 points, it's actually a difference of 10,000 times greater, or four decimal places greater. And that's because, again, this is a logarithmic scale. So that's why it's very important to maintain pH in a very tight range, because if you don't, uh, really bad things can happen in biological systems. So, so um, allow these organisms to buffer themselves on these pHs. What does a buffer mean? Well, it resists a change in pH. It may help organisms, in particularly the body, and also in plants, uh, with keep pHs within a narrow range. There are combinations of hydrogen ion acceptors and donors to help kind of reduce the change that occurs. So let's take distilled water for an extreme example. Uh, here is our volume of sodium hydroxide. This is a strong base added. So we start at neutral pH, and we add the ever slightest drop of sodium hydroxide, and we see the pH spike up immediately. Then we have different levels of buffer, or different concentrations of buffer. You can see even adding a very small amount of buffer will reduce the, ch the uh, quickly changing pH. The higher amount of buffer here, we can see we maintain this pH pretty well consistent throughout all the different volume of sodium hydroxide um, added here. So again, this helps organisms maintain life or homeostasis. Uh, you're maintaining uh, a, a very tight buffer system for your blood. So this is very important that your blood stays in a very tight range of 7.34 to 7.38. That's normal. Uh, pH of 7 to 7.8 is going to cause some issues, and if you reach as low as a pH of 6 or as high a pH of 9, it's going to result in death. Luckily, your body has ways of maintaining this through buffers and other means, and we can see just the importance of maintaining pH, knowing what it is, and keeping it within a tight range to allow organisms to grow and develop.